impotent, mediocre, damned. Lloyd Betts' assessment of this country is alarming. He says people, politicians included, are simply passive consumers waiting for that bag of goodies to fall into their laps. How then in this context can a political promise hold any potency? When this declaration runs stale, he will make another one. So last day he made a declaration about employment. He's done nothing about it in 12 months. And this year he's going to make another announcement about it. If you look at the manifesto and you sort of pick out an action plan in the manifesto, and you look at what we've done over the last year and what we are planning to do, you will find a close uh, relationship between what we said we were going to do and what we are doing. I don't want to get directly political, but I mean, quite frankly, I mean, when you examine the last 12 or 13 months, and if you had a blank sheet in which you were to put down achievements, it'd be very hard to put down anything in my view. We would seek to reduce bureaucracy, we would seek to reduce red tape, and we're doing it. All the, uh, the promises that Mr. Manning has made really are promises that have been made by the PNM before the NAR, and by the NAR after the PNM, and now by the, the, the new PNM after the old PNM and the NAR. They're the same promises. People are coming to invest. You remember Mr. Tiwari saying that $6 billion was going to come into the country after he, he, had, we'd be, uh, we, he had been in, in his office? We've had all those promises before. We will have them again, because they're not facing the problem. We would seek to revitalize the energy sector. We would spend some time on it. We would make a conscious effort to go out and seek foreign investment uh, to, re to revitalize, to bring in the enormous amount of investment capital that is needed, and we are doing it. I can't think of any specific promise that we broke, but I think that there was a general expectation, a general view in the population that we did not live up to the expectations that we created during the campaign period. The jobs will be created. Nobody has a concept of a, a macroeconomic plan, a plan for the whole of the country, which will solve the problems of the country. We really do not analyze the country's problems. In fact, we shy away from them because the, the socio-political issues are very touchy and politicians who have been in the government would prefer to stay away from them. We have confronted them head on. After 35 years, it is not fair to say that uh, people in public life, politicians, or in the leadership in other areas, whether it's trade unions, uh, the university, uh, the private sector, that there has not been discussions of these issues and attempts to find solutions. The people are afraid to state the problem which is that we are poorer now than we were 10 years ago, by half. The last word. The problem is translating, moving, you might say, from analysis to specific strategic action that is sufficiently comprehended by the entire population. There ought to have been a scorecard which says that if this is happening to the whole country, what is happening to you, and you, and you, and you? Okay, is it equitable or is it not? Okay, and there had to be a proper discussion of what the adjustments were, what it would cost, how long it would take, right? And what resources we had to bring to bear to turn the thing around. The honeymoon is over. I hope the divorce has not started. If I have any um, energy, in me as, as a government minister, as a party, I think, is to ensure that we do, in fact, perform. We do, do, we do create uh, jobs in the country. We do improve the, the uh, situation in respect of crime. We deal with, with the corruption in the society. We do things. There are sparks of hope. But the only way it will work is if you and I take it seriously. Stop depending solely on political promises. Use this. Work hard with the will not just to survive, but to prosper. Ira Martha, TV6 News, with a special report.